Good morning to everyone who is here uh, worshiping in person and also the folks, I wish we could all wait to you, uh, the folks who are worshiping with us at home. Um, as a reminder for the folks at home, you're going to need to have access to the bulletin, either go to the church website and print it out or pull it up on, on a device and follow along that way. Um, we have it set up. I have it set up on this end so you can just see whoever is speaking and without the, without the PowerPoint slides. If you just see me in a small box, that's the settings on your end. I had a conversation with somebody this week about that. Um, if, if you don't know how to change the view from gallery view to speaker view, please call the office during the week or call me and I will um, walk you through that. Uh, but for this morning, <laughs> it is what it is. Uh, but so glad that we can all be together in worship. Uh, the other, um, on the, for the folks with the screen uh, at home, I have um, a slide up right now, which I will take down, but you all, everyone who is here in person will get to see it later. If you would like to donate through the Presbyterian Church for Haiti Relief, the, um, the website where to donate that is on your screen at home and you'll get, everyone else will get to see that later. But if you don't know, there is a, um, an earthquake in, in Haiti yesterday, seven point whatever. And, uh, and we have folks on the ground and Presbyterian Disaster Assistance is there to help. And if you would like to make donations to that, um, you are able to. That's what I have for announcements this morning. Um, so I'm just gonna invite everybody to take a deep breath as we transition into a time of worship and make your breath a prayer that as you inhale, you're inviting the spirit into your space. And as you exhale, to be able to let everything else go. This is our time to make the decision to be here, body, mind, and spirit, because God has a word for each of us this morning. And um, it's, it's a relationship, it's a, uh, it's a decision to be open and then asking God to help us take all the distractions away. Uh, we're gonna let Donald usher us into worship through song and, and we can be in prayer. Let us worship God.
Today's call to worship is based on Isaiah 55. Come, all you who are thirsty, come to the waters, you who have no money, come, buy, and eat. We all together say, why spend money on what is not bread and labor on that which does not satisfy? Listen, listen to me, and eat what is good and you will delight in the riches of fear. Give ear and come to God. Listen, that you may live. We come to seek the Lord, to call on his name, to listen for his voice, to seek life. We come to worship God. Let us worship God together.
I'm totally delighting that the birds are singing along with us this morning. I don't know if anybody else is tuned into that. But. It is in our confession that we realize our desire for God and our hope for God's mercy. It is in admitting the truth of our lives that we take the first step toward wholeness and healing. Please join me in our unison prayer of confession, and then you are invited to personalize that prayer for yourself in silent confession. Let us pray together. Gracious God, we confess that we are afraid of getting it wrong, that somehow your grace is contingent on our right belief. Our desire to get it right makes us critical of those we think get it wrong. Forgive us when we judge without compassion, without humility, and when we condemn people in your name. We know that you appreciate our best efforts, but remind us that even at our most excellent, we still fall short. With the same mercy that you extend to us, may we allow for ourselves and offer to one another. Amen. Friends, hear the good news. The love of God is beyond measure, and you are included in that love. Know that you are forgiven and thus freed to love and serve in Jesus' name. Alleluia and amen. Let us stand and sing. Lord, like Nicodemus, we come to the Word with many questions. Like the Pharisees, we can be captivated by correctness and intent on right answers. As we turn to your Word, Spirit of God, do not let our desire for information dominate our need for transformation. Let us hear the Word and be moved to greater faith and obedience. Amen. Today's uh, scripture reading, which we will read in unison, is from Psalm 111. Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the company of the upright, in the congregation. Great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who delight in them. Full of honor and majesty is his work, and his righteousness endures forever. He has gained renown by his wonderful deeds. The Lord is gracious and merciful. He provides food for those who fear him. He is ever mindful of his covenant. He has shown his people the power of his works in giving them the heritage of the nations. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever to be performed with faithfulness and uprightness. He sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. And our second scripture lesson comes from the Gospel of John, 
chapter 6, verses 51 through 58. Jesus says, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, very truly, I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them, just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father. So whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not, not like that which your ancestors ate and they died, but the one who eats this bread will live forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And let us join our hearts in prayer. Gracious God, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts might be acceptable in your sight, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Years ago, I participated in a, in a funeral at a Catholic church. And the, the person who died was a former organist of my church, which was, was a Presbyterian church. And another pastor participated. He went on to serve in a Methodist church, and she was also able to participate in the service. And the priest was a cousin of the deceased, and he invited us to be part of the Eucharist or the, or the communion service. The only time I have ever participated in communion in a Catholic church, I got to, part, I got to help serve. I, I said to him, are you going to get in trouble? And he said, not with the people who are here. If there were other people here, I couldn't do it. But with the folks here, I'm safe. And I, it, I treasure that memory. It gives me hope. Uh, my most vivid memory, however, is after I, I drank from the chalice, I looked down and I was wearing lipstick. And I'm like, oh, this is a first. <laughs> as, I, as I took the, the cloth and wiped off the cup. We have all, I imagine we all have Catholic family and friends, and I imagine that you've been to a service where you've been invited forward uh, and you cross your arms and are given a blessing. Why aren't we able to participate? You probably know, but we're going to go over different understandings of, of what happens to the elements during communion because, that, because our lectionary passage from today, John 6, opens that door, so we're, gonna, we're just going to walk through it. In the Roman Catholic Church, the teaching is that when the priest prays over the bread and the cup, it becomes the body and blood of Jesus Christ. And the you know, theological name for this is transubstantiation. Trans, like to transform, to change, to become something different, and substantiation meaning substance. So the substance, it is transformed. It is no longer bread and wine. It is the body and blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, the Catholic Church is highly influenced by John 6, what I just read, and they take it very literally. Very truly, I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. The crowd who heard that must have been completely confused by what he was saying, uh, but the, 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 the folks to whom John was writing, the early church, they were already participating in this meal, and then I think we've gone back to being confused, or at least we have disagreements about what happens and how we're supposed to understand it. In a Catholic Mass, uh, Eucharist, which means Thanksgiving, we could call it Eucharist, the Lord's Supper, Communion, is, is the whole service leads up to that. That is the most important part of the Catholic service for uh, the Reformed tradition, of which we are a part, 
it's all about this. It's a proclamation of the word. It's a proclamation of scripture and its interpretation. Uh, but for Catholics, it is, it is Jesus becoming part of you. And I like that terminology rather than thinking that we need to literally eat the flesh and drink the blood of Christ. Because if you think about it too long, ill. But Jesus becoming part of us, yes. And now if I were raised Catholic, um, I would be fully indoctrinated and, and understand it, and it better, I am sure. But I was raised Presbyterian. But not all Protestants believe the same thing. Uh, and I'm going to differ, uh, present different understandings, and I don't know you all well enough to know how many different traditions are present in the room, because some of us were raised in different traditions and then found ourselves in, in the Presbyterian church. In my former church, the music director was Lutheran. The youth director was raised, the, uh, no, she was raised Catholic, but she became Episcopalian. Uh, the church that I served was Methodist and Presbyterian. So we had lots of different uh, understandings. Uh, in, and, I, and so I'm going to say to you, hopefully I will nuance everything well. If I don't, please tell me afterwards because I, I like to learn. But I did do research. Uh, so forgive me if I don't do your tradition justice. My understanding of the Orthodox tradition is that they believe in transubstantiation that becomes the body and blood of Jesus Christ. They're not too fussy about supporting it with, with scripture. It's just the tradition and, and it's accepted. That's very Orthodox. Now, you also need to remember our ancestors believed this too until Martin Luther raised an eyebrow and started this little thing called the Protestant Reformation. Luther vigorously denied transubstantiation and he's been accused of believing in in consubstantiation uh which is which is our tradition now con means with there's lots of spanish speakers in within this congregation i know so con con contigo conmigo with right so the spirit of god is with the elements it's with the bread and with the cup um, it doesn't become doesn't transform but the spirit of god is with this is what John Wesley of the Methodist Church believed. This is what John Calvin of the Presbyterian Church believed. The Episcopal Church, which is the closest to, to the Catholic Church in the Protestant denominations, they are deliberately vague, right? which I, it's so interesting when you research all this stuff. You can believe either, and there's room at the table for you. Uh, the uh, Catholic worship services, you have Eucharist every service. The same is true for the Episcopalians. But believe it or not, that's also our heritage. In Calvin and Geneva, they, they celebrated communion with every worship service. We could, we could go back to that if we wanted to and we'd be true to our tradition. Uh, and finally, one more is Zwingli. Zwingli was a theologian from Switzerland and he didn't believe in, in anything magical, mystical going on. He said, we do this because Jesus says, do this in remembrance of me. Of me. We just remember Jesus at the table and that's it. That's, that's our Baptist brothers and sisters, a lot of our evangelical brothers and sisters in faith. That's what they believe. It's just a table of remembrance. So which way of thinking is right? And what's at stake? I, I firmly believe that, that when we die and go to heaven, there will not be a theology exam. Um, <laughs> and, and if there is, I pray that it's an essay exam. But anyway, but, I, but it's our, our relationship, our eternal relationship with God is based on grace. I might have eaten that word, so I'm going to say it again. Our eternal relationship with God is based on grace. Love no matter what, love despite um, and this table, in my understanding, is about grace. Jesus saying, for you, O oh, clu oh, clueless people, I would lay down my life. I would give my all so that you might know that nothing can separate us from the love of God. It is meant to, to convey the sacrificial love of God for all of us. And it's a whole other sermon to describe all that the that that our understanding, reform understanding of what the of what the table of what celebrating the Lord's Supper is meant to convey, and and the mystery of what we don't understand. But that that's a different sermon today. Just focusing on on our understanding of what happens to the elements. 
But as you know, this table ha has become divisive. Um, I have sat hurt and angry in worship when the love of God is proclaimed up front and then I'm not invited to the table uh, because I don't believe what the folks up front believe or and what I believe they can't know. But that being said, I, I've been influenced by, by Flannery O'Connor. Someone once told the Catholic writer Flannery O'Connor that, that it would be more open-minded to think that the blessed sacrament of the altar is a great, wonderful, powerful symbol. And her response was, if it's only a symbol, to hell with it. I want to honor the deep faith that believes that, that uh, to participate in this meal is to, to bring Jesus Christ into your very being. I, I honor that. And I don't believe it's a symbol. Our tradition doesn't believe it's a symbol. Um, I have experienced the Holy Spirit more presiding at communion probably than any other place. Um, and, and talking about the Holy Spirit can make Presbyterians very, very uncomfortable. But I want to honor that belief that, that believes that Jesus is truly present at the table. I believe that too. But I also think that Jesus weeps that the table um, has, has been used as a weapon uh, or that people are denied participation. Last week, I shared a story of, of doing a sermon on, on stewardship of creation and, and how it became a political sermon. Um, even talking about participation in communion, what's in the news? that Catholic bishops are trying to deny uh, participation from President Biden because he's pro-choice. Theologically, I think they're standing on very, very dangerous ground because if they're determining participation in the meal based on everyone's compliance with Catholic teachings, again, who can stand on either side of the table? The Presbyterian Church used to limit who could participate in, in this meal. You had to be baptized in order to participate in the Lord's Supper. Now we don't turn anyone away. Believing the, the, the scripture story that is very influential in this, in this change of thought is the road to Emmaus. The disciples are working, walking with Jesus. He's you know, opening scripture to them. They're completely clueless. Their eyes are opened during the meal. People's eyes can be opened to the reality of Jesus Christ at the table. Years ago, I, my first call, I was an associate pastor in a church in, in Puerto Rico, in Guaynabo, Puerto Rico, or, or say with an American accent, uh, right outside of San Juan, Puerto Rico. And, uh, there was a woman that I knew from, from a group that I would go to, AAUW, American Association of University Women. And so I, she was not a regular attender, but when she filed forward for communion, I said to her, Becky, the body of Christ broken for you. She told me later that because I used her name, it was like God was like Becky the body of Christ broken for you. I'm not taking credit for that. That's totally a God, a totally a God thing. God is so good. But her eyes were opened that this relationship to God was offered to her and it rekindled in her a desire to be back amongst the faithful and on a journey of faith. In seminary class years ago, we were talking about the different and again, different faith traditions around the table, and people were talking about their experiences of the Lord's Supper, and and some people had some you know, very uh, profound stories, spiritual experiences, and this one woman, she's a, a German Lutheran from from Germany, and she says, "I have no idea what you people are talking about, but I know that when I go to this to the table, 
And when the bread is put in my hand, I can touch and taste and smell and see that God is and that God is with me. You'll hear me say that a lot because she, she touched my heart. When we come to this table, we get to touch and taste and smell and see that God is and that God is with us. I wish we were celebrating uh, communion this morning, but we're not. Uh, didn't uh, didn't you know connect those dots in time? But I'm going to let Mary Oliver have the last words. This poem is called "The Vast Ocean Begins Just Outside Our Church, the Eucharist." She wrote, "Something has happened to the bread and the wine." They have been blessed. What now? The body leans forward to receive the gift from the priest's hand, then the chalice. They are something else now from what they were before this began. I want to see Jesus, maybe in the clouds or on the shore, just walking, beautiful man and clearly someone else besides. On the hard days, I ask myself if I ever will. Also, there are times my body whispers to me that I have. Amen. We will, uh, we will now affirm our faith. Uh, today's affirmation of uh, faith is from the Westminster Catechism. We will uh, affirm our faith together uh, after I ask the opening question. What is God? God is a spirit in and of God's self, infinite in being, glory, blessedness, and perfection. All sufficient, eternal, unchangeable, incomprehensible, everywhere present, almighty, knowing all things, most wise, most holy, most just, most merciful and gracious, long suffering, and abundant in goodness and truth. So now is the time in the service where we would normally pass the plate, um, but I'm just going to encourage you, whether today or during the week, um, to, to give back to God that which you are able. Uh, be as generous as you can. I firmly believe that you know, if you believe in the mission and the ministry of this church, then, then you need to support it. That being said, I know that this last year has affected a lot of people financially so that's also we give what we can time talents and treasure but what we do here the nurturing of the soul is so where do we have places in society to do this uh, if we believe in this and want to the next generation the next generation and the next generation to be telling the stories then we need to to give as we can. So children of God, um, let us give to God joyfully and with a cheerful heart.
And let us join our hearts in prayer. Gracious God, we ask that uh, you would give us wisdom how we use uh, people's generosity. May it be used to build up your church, um, to expand your ministry, to ensure that the stories of faith continue to be told to your glory and to your honor. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. And again, let's join our hearts in prayer. Uh, gracious God, we are grateful for your spirit. How you can use the words of others to touch our souls. We are amazed and so grateful for when that happens and, and we have no idea and we just get the, the gift to hear about it later. And Lord, I trust that that has happened to everybody in this room and everybody who's listening from home. That word that just was what folks needed to hear when they needed to hear it. Praise the Lord. You use the ordinary to accomplish the extraordinary. Lord, we pray that you would use us all that we say, all that we do, how we use the energy that we have in this life, may it be to build up your kingdom. Because you are life. You have the words of life. Um, you are what keep us keeping on, keep us hopeful, keep our sense of humor, strong. You are the one who gives patience when we're done. Who gives us endurance when, when, when we are ready to collapse. Lord, if you call us to it, you make it possible. Lord, give us eyes that see and ears that hear all the ways that you, not only how you're trying to bless us, but how you would use us in the living of these days. Lord, we pray that you would be with Grace Presbyterian um, in this interim time. Use this time to discern To whom are you calling your people to be in, in ministry with? What is the best use of our time and, and our energy and our resources? Lord, we trust that you will bless our earnest prayers that seek you. Lord, we are grateful for, again, for all the ways that you remind us that you are and that you are with us. Lord, we're grateful for uh, folks who journey with us on this journey of faith. Uh, we get such support and encouragement one from another, and, and we get to pray for each other. Lord, we pray for Dorothy and Ken and Larry and Mercedes and Gail. Lord, you know what's going on with them, and we pray uh, your blessing upon them. We pray for Curtis and William and Paul, for Pedro, for Yvonne's mom, for Sydney, and for all the folks that we na name in our hearts. Lord, I looked up Jean. Those that we know who are sick and ill, who need healing, whether it's body, mind, spirit, whether it's all of the above. Lord, I pray that they might know that you are with them. Surround them with people who, uh, who will care for them. Lord, we pray for all the, the kids returning to school uh, and for teachers and for discernment. Uh, Lord, we had hoped to be in a different place going into, into the fall. And it's hard to plan. And folks are holding their breath. 
and dread is a thought. Lord, remind us that you are and that you are with, that it is wise to take it one day at a time and trust that you will give us enough to meet the challenges of the day. And at the end of the day, Lord, we will sit down and thank you for how you showed up. Lord, help us to be patient. Lord, we um, pray for the folks in Haiti and we pray for all the folks who are responding to that need. Lord, there are needs around the world. Um, help us to do our part when and where we can. And Lord, we thank you for, for all the folks the good folks in the world who are doing what they can. Lord, we are grateful that we can be together um, in the sanctuary, but also online. It is good to worship you in spirit. And, and we talked about communion, but may our hearts commune with Jesus as, as our lead, as our teacher, as our friend, as our savior. Because he taught us and because it has been taught generation after generation after generation, we can pray in one voice the prayer that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You are invited to stand in body or in spirit and we are going to sing Be Thou My Vision. to sing and delightful again to worship God together as the family of God. Let us go out into the world knowing that God is, that God is with us. Let us be proof to the world that God is and that God is with us. Go knowing that the God who knit us together in our mother's wombs 
would die for us and did in the person of Jesus Christ, but is with us in power and spirit this day and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>